Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Hi, my name is Joseph Owen Alcoholic. So young or whoever's timing, give me like a two-minute, you know, like warning or something like that, you know, before the time's up. But otherwise, I'll keep you here all day, you know, like... <laughs> For me today, you know, talking about this stuff, you know, I, I love it. Uh, you know, people have said about me, you know, if, if you want to talk big book with Joseph, you better bring a lunch. You know, it's like it's something that uh, that I get a lot of pleasure out of. And and it's amazing that, like, you know, my life has totally changed 180 degrees from what I used to drink. You know, I mean, I can say that with joy or I, I'm really making a factual observation. But the thing is that um, the character that I had built, before I got sober was just, you know, it was like a very shady character. We talk about practicing principles in all of our affairs, and that is always true. We always practice principles in all of our affairs. The question is, what principles are we practicing? And, you know, the fact of the matter is that I decided to take on the principles of Alcoholics Anonymous, which are enumerated, and this has been talked about in a, in a, um, in a grapevine by, by the way, give me a thumbs up, Young, if, if you're getting me uh, clear audio-wise. Because I'm on a headset, okay, fine. Um, sometimes with this headset, it picks up all the stuff I don't want to be transmitted. I don't know, like, you know, like, <laughs> go figure. But, um, but today it's working. Um, so the principles that I practice today in all my affairs, you know, having, uh, having achieved this 12 step, and I'm skipping, I'm skipping around, but I'll try and make like a, a more linear, um, uh, talk of this. Uh, but the principles when it says in the 12th step, having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps, the intended result, not as a result, but as the result, the intended result. So anybody who's doing this work, what you're getting yourself into is catalyze a spiritual experience that is the intended result of the 12th step, right? And then to practice these principles in all our affairs. So any anybody who's inquisitive, their hands should shoot up and say, well, what principles are you talking about, right? That's, that's what we should do, especially as alcoholics, because we don't want to do anything until you tell us the whole story. So you should ask, what principles are you talking about, right? So they are as enumerated, going along with the step. Honesty, hope, faith, courage, integrity, willingness, humility, love, discipline, perseverance, awareness, and service. Okay, so those are the principles that I try and practice in my, in my life today. But the principles that I practiced before I got sober were the exact opposite, you know, where I, where today I practice honesty, there I had dishonesty. You could ask me what I, what I had for breakfast, and I would just lie to you. You know, I, I, would, I would tell you I had scones when, when in reality I had cereal. And I don't even know why. You know, I would just lie about everything. You know, I had despair, I had fear, I, was, was, I had lack of courage. If that's what you're experiencing, if those are the things that you're experiencing, if you are experiencing anxiety, if you're experiencing fear, if you're experiencing lack of trust in yourself and your fellows, then a drink is going to seem like a good idea. The only thing you got between you and a drink is willpower. That's, 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 that's the way it works. So it, what I've discovered is that what I needed to do was to remove that emotional pressure, to somehow remove my anxiety, to somehow remove my fear, to somehow address, you know, the, the elements in my life that was pushing me toward the drink. That's, that's, that's the whole thing, you know, as far as like Alcoholics Anonymous goes, is like the 12 steps are going to work on those three key relationships that all human beings suffer with. Okay, you ready? Relationship with myself relationship with God, relationship with my fellows. Those are the three relationships that all human beings suffer with, right? And, and seven and a half billion people on the planet, 99.9% of the human population is doing nothing about this. I mean, there, there are some people that are you know, on Tony Robbins seminars or in relationship counseling or whatever it is, but as, as a people, as a culture, nobody, nobody's really doing it, you know? I get to log on in these meetings you know, and I get to talk about my fears. I get to talk about I'm struggling. You know, I've established a, a, a set of uh, a God squad. You know, uh, Young is on this call. Rachel is on this call. I got my friend Nikki in Toronto. There are other people that I talk to on a daily basis. Because because the fact of the matter is, you know, you spin the wheel of misfortune. Something bad is going to happen today, tomorrow, the next day. And what are you going to do? If you don't have somebody to call and, like, work it out, then, then a drink is going to seem like a good idea. A drink, a drug, a pill, you know. And then, and then we put away, we put away the hard drugs, right? And now we go to this stuff that nobody's, 
no cops looking for me because I'm watching season five of The Crown all night, right? But the fact of the matter is, it's not, it's not healthy, right? It's not healthy when you stay up till four o'clock in the morning and get your Netflix on. It's not healthy when you're eating like, like a pig, you know, because you don't want to take a look at yourself. It's not healthy, you know? I, I had a, a friend of mine called me up and he said, you know what? Uh, uh, somebody that he deals with in, in his business is struggling with a gaming addiction. I mean, I've never heard of such a thing. Like, like he, says that, he says that the guy might have to get sent to detox because he can't stop gaming, right? Uh, these are the things that we're, that we're confronted with in the world we're in. We, we, we are so ill in, of, of, of being able to deal with ourselves, those three key relationships, and those are dealt with in the 12 steps, right? The first three steps are going to realign me with God. The fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh are going to realign me with, with myself. Right? And then you got eight and nine. I'm gonna I'm gonna start making amends to people. And just think how miraculous it is. Sorry, I'm I'm on, I'm on my phone and I only got two hands, so I had, to, I had an itch. Um, I uh, think of think of think of how it is in, in Alcoholics Anonymous, right? I don't know if anybody watched the Johnny Depp trial or Amber Heard or whatever it was. Okay, fine. All of these, it's like all over the internet and this and that, right? Here are people like slugging it out, lying about each other, this and that, whatever. Here it is in Alcoholics Anonymous. We go back to people that we've harmed, and they might even they not even know it. And we go back and we say, "Hey, you know what? I harmed you. How can I make it right?" Like, how amazing is that? You got people, you know, that are that are caught on tape putting a bullet in another person's head and walk into court and say it wasn't me. Right? These are these are the people that aren't in Alcoholics Anonymous. These are people that are not doing, you know, trying to clean up themselves. Here we are with, you know, I can't live with myself if I'm not doing the work, you know? And the work is making apologies. The work is taking a look at myself. The work is taking a look at, you know, page 86. You guys aren't, well, aren't aware. Before we go to sleep at night, there's a whole list there. Some things that you can take a look at, you know? Were we honest today? Were we fearful? You know, things to watch out for. Do we owe an apology, right? And when I when I look at myself and do these things, I feel better about myself. You know, I like I really like to say that when I wake up, I jump out of bed today. You know, the way I used to be, and you guys might identify with this depending on where you are with your sobriety. The way I used to be, I used to get out of bed all hungover, right? I used to pull crumpled singles out of my pocket. I used to have to go and look for my car, and then when I found my car, check it to make sure it didn't have blood anywhere on it. That's the kind of life I live. I was always trying to stay one step ahead of the police, one step, one step ahead of the, the bill collectors, one step ahead of my girlfriend, you know? And now I can, I can look at the world, you know, and, and stand up to it and say, you know, here I am. I have authenticity today. That's what I got from the fifth step, sense of authenticity. You know, I was able to sit in front of another human being, tell them the things that I've done in my life, and they didn't reject me. Think how amazing that is. You can't buy that for $100,000. And I've been on the other side of the fifth step. Any of you that, is, that are considering, you know, sponsorship, go be a sponsor. You get to sit in that chair on the other side of it. You get to heal humanity one human being at a time. When you listen to another person's four step or you're a sponsor for somebody, you know, and they call into you and they tell you, you know what, I'm suffering with this, I'm doing that and this and that. You've got experience in that area. I mean, that's amazing. It's amazing stuff. I mean, I have a job. I put in 50, I put in 50 hours a week on that. But my real job is that I work for God. And I don't say that with shame. I don't say that with fear. And there are other people on this call who feel the same way about me. We work for God, you know? And I, I, it just so happens I get paid for a series of, like, you know, checking accounts or whatever that funnel down for me through my boss or whatever. But the reality is I, I work for God. And, and, and it says, I, I always talk about this. And I'm trying, again, I'm trying to make sort of a linear, I hope this all hangs together. But, um, I'm just trying to talk about how I've used variety in the day that I'm in, so I hope you guys are getting something. But I look on page 63, and I have my employment contract right there. When we sincerely took such a position, all sorts of remarkable things followed. We had a new employer, right? I have a new employer. I'm not working for myself no more. You know why? You want to hear the biggest reason? Because it didn't work. I didn't accomplish anything that I wanted to. I was good at getting girls and terrible at keeping them. I could get jobs and couldn't, couldn't last more than a month. You know, I could get, I, could, I, I couldn't do anything right, you know, and I always had the I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's how it was when I was working for myself. Now I have a new employer today, right? He gives me direction. He 
tells me the things that I need to do, right? It says, being all powerful, he provided what we needed. How amazing is that, right? Being all powerful, he provided what we needed. That's, that's amazing. That's all I get. That's all I need to hear, right? But there's a little bit more to that sentence. It says, if we kept close to him and performed his work well. Okay, I can try and do that. If we kept close to him, that's prayer and meditation. I connect with him and performed his work well. And, and I'm on this call right now. I'm on the Zoom call. This is me performing his work to the next viability. I took a call from my sponsor today, uh, from my sponsee today. You know, that's me performing his work. I delivered, um, I went and purchased whatever. I, I gave food, food to this homeless girl. Uh, well, actually, technically she had a home, but I don't know, a jobless girl. Um, because I saw a post on Facebook of a friend of mine who said that this girl has no food. Could I go and do it? And then I was okay, fine. You know, I can spend about $25 and I can go and deliver it to this girl. That's how I roll today, you know? I don't, I don't do it for praise. I don't do it for the accolades. And I, and I, and the reality is I don't do it specifically so I can stay sober. I do it so that I can serve God and feel good about how I, how I live. The ancillary benefit is that I stay sober. That's the thing is that like, if I were to just chase sobriety, that's willpower at work. You know, just chasing it, saying I'm not going to drink, I'm not going to drink, I'm not going to drink. The reason, the reason why that doesn't work is because someday you're going to lose your job on the same day your dog dies, right? You know, when you play a country song backwards, you know, like, you know, your dog comes back, like the girlfriend comes back, your house, you know, doesn't burn down, right? You know, some, someday the country song's going to, going to come into my life and bad things are going to happen and the willpower is going to go away and I'm going to say, you know what? Maybe a drink is okay today. Maybe a drink is okay. And the thing is, you know, I have to be, I have to man up for that. It says on page 24, you know, you got this thing that you really, and if you're not into this book, by the way, get into this book, man. You know, this is your life. This is the whole thing. It's a diet book. It's a math book. It's a book about living, living a good life. But it says the fact is that most alcoholics, for reasons that obscure, have lost the power of choice and drink. Our so-called willpower becomes practically non-existent. So if you're counting on willpower, you got this sentence to tell you it's not going to work. We are unable at certain times to bring into to our consciousness the sufficient for memory of suffering and humiliation of even a week or a month ago. We were without defense against the first drink. And that's how it is to say. It's been a long, long time since I put a drink to my lips, okay? But the fact of the matter is, I could just as easily, you know, relapse today if I don't have a, if I don't have a spiritual program. You know what I mean? If I'm, not, if I'm not working with others, I listen when people come back, when come back to the fellowship. You got your relapses, the weather is real nice now, right? This is a time when people love to relax. The weather's real nice. You know, our thoughts turn to spring. You know, love is in the air, right? Love is in the air. Okay? But the fact of the matter is, things, things might go south tomorrow, right? You get all these relapses and you ask them. You say, you know, what happened? Well, I wasn't going to meetings. I wasn't working with others and I wasn't being on. Right? So those, are, those are basically the three things that you're going to hear. Right? So I know that if I'm not doing those things, and I'm setting myself up for a relapse. And, and I, you know, I, 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 you know, I put enough time between me and a drink. I could, put, I could be put in the, 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 um, the old timers category or whatever. I, I, the last thing I want to be in this program is an old timer. Right? I want to be the guy who's like hitting it out of the park as a newcomer. The guy with, you know, 24 hours, the guy with a week that's like nailing his meetings. He's going to three meetings a day. He's cleaning up the airstreams. He's doing this. He's doing that. He's doing whatever. I want that fire. I don't want to be the guy who sits in the back of the room and judges everybody and says, you know what, that guy misquoted the big book, you know, that guy did this, that guy did that. No, I don't want to be that guy. And the thing is that I hang around with people who aren't like that either. You know, Young and I have a call a week, you know, that we talk about stuff like this, you know, how we've been, we've been gifted, you know, the ability to transmit this to the next generation. It's a gift, you know, and we, and we also say to ourselves, how it's, it's, it's not, it's not that common in the rooms of alcohol. So not, not a lot of people are talking about this. Not a lot of people are telling you to get into the book, you know? And I'll, I'll tell you something about my book, right? You see how it's like falling apart. So they, they say, you know, if your big book is falling apart, probably your life isn't, right? That's what I want to hear. Cause I'm, 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 I'm checking in my book. I'm quoting stuff. I'm reading to people, you know, I'm, my sponsors are calling me. I'm saying, let's look at the book. What does the book have to say about it? But my sponsors aren't calling me because to ask for my opinion or because I'm a bright guy. Who cares? They can find just another bright guy to reverse my opinion. But when I get him into the book, that's when we start, we bring God into it. That's when we got truth. That's when we got a fellowship. That's when we got 87 years of experience. Alcohol Anonymous just did 87 years. 
right? Um, and, and why is it that it's, that it's March from June 10th, 1935? I still got sober in December of 34. Why is it June 10th, 1935? Because that's when Bill transmitted it to Bob. That was when Bill stayed sober. Bob stayed sober for the first day. He had a glass of drink. That's when we proved that there's, that, that there's a fellowship where we could, we could transmit from one human being to another the ability to stay sober one day at a time through a methodology that they wrote down on paper and they created in the form of the 12 steps. And I mean, think about it. Just, 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 you know, let's just you know, let our hair down for a second and just think about this fellowship, okay? Right? They, Bill wrote a book, okay? He was a stockbroker. He was not a literature major, right? He wasn't, he wasn't an author. He wrote a book which has sold 40 million copies. And when did he do it? At four years sober, right? Young got four years sober. But young, where's your book? Did you write a book? Young didn't write a book. People would, people would, <laughs> people would, you know, I got more time than that, you know. I didn't write a book, you know. Bill wrote it with four, with four years sober. He wrote a book that wrote 40 million copies that remain almost entirely unchanged. That's miraculous. I'm holding on to a miracle here, right? You know? Why not, why not look at it that way? The more I like to look at my life as being miraculous, the more it becomes miraculous. The more I like to make connections with people and people come into my life. And, you know, like, I'm, I'm so surprised about that. You know, I'll say something to somebody and they'll be like, I was just thinking that. It's just like it's a joy, you know? Then you have on the other side of the coin, the curmudgeon people, you know? Where everything is about paying taxes and dying and, like, you know, like, you know, having the right kind of marble in your, in your foyer. You know, and, 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 you know, having dinner parties. I, I, I used to, before I came to Israel, right, I lived in Beverly Hills. I'll tell you, I'll tell you some interesting uh, fact about Beverly Hills. There's seven times more suicides in Beverly Hills than there is on Skid Row. Okay, how come? Why, why are people committing suicide left and right in Beverly Hills? Because their insides don't match their outsides, right? They're, they're just waiting for somebody to out them and to just, you know, for, for it all to fall apart. And to say your life isn't as beautiful as you think it is. That your kids don't love you, that your wife doesn't love you, that somebody's having an affair, that this, that. Everybody's like all nervous, you know? That you're driving, you're driving a Mercedes, while the person, the, the, the neighbor next to you is driving a Lamborghini, right? And then you got a guy down the street who's driving a Tesla. Everything's about competing, competing, competing. I don't want to live in that world. I want to live in a spiritual world. I entered into the fourth, the fourth dimension of existence, right? You know, and when I, and when I put myself out there in this regard, I get to stay sober. You know, and it's not, it's, it's for me today, it's not about running away from a drink. I, I truly believe, you know, that, 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 that my, my, I, I've, I've become immune to drinking. It just, it just, it just doesn't occur to me, right? It just doesn't occur to me, you know, because it would take me away from, it would take me away from who I am. There's on page 89, practical experience shows that nothing will so much ensure immunity from drinking as intensive work with other alcoholics. I work intensively with other alcoholics. That does not mean clicking a Zoom link. I don't care how many how many Zoom meetings you go through a day. If you're not intensively working with other alcoholics, you're at risk. You know. Um, I read something the other day in Step One on on um, on the 12 and 12. So the big book was written in. It was published in 1939. It was written in 1938. It came out in 1939, um, and it was it was decided to be our basic textbook. Uh, in 1952, Bill Wilson went around the country and he found that people didn't really have a handle on the steps and the tradition, so he wrote the 12 and 12, okay, which outlined the 12 steps and the 12 traditions in more in a more authoritative format, right? And this, within step one, you can read some beautiful stuff. He was really a poet, this Bill Wilson. I don't know where he got it from. God was working for him, I'll tell you. We know that little good can come to any alcoholic unless he is first accepting his devastating weakness and all its consequences. Right? And the consequences aren't that I drank and fell down. The consequences are, are, are not that I, you know, I cheated on my girlfriend. Those aren't the consequences. The consequences are that my thinking isn't right today, today, right? It's been a long time since I put a drink to my lips, but the thing is, my thinking just ate mine sometimes, especially in areas of money and romance. I get, I get you know, my, 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 my brain is a dangerous neighborhood, and I can't go there alone or unarmed, right? Until he so humbles himself, his sobriety and his penny will be precarious. Precarious means like, you know, being perched on the side of a cliff. I don't want to have precarious sobriety. I have to humble myself. How do I humble myself? I humble myself by running up to another alcoholic and saying, you know what, here's what I'm planning on doing, right? 
I don't know if anybody has has you know has has gone and done, done that, but you see just how ridiculous some of the things that we've got in our head, you know, when it comes out of our mouth. In sobriety, okay, I'll tell you, like, just so that we know we're, we're in the right place. In sobriety, I was um, I was freaking out about having to do a PowerPoint presentation to a, to a group of to a, group, uh, a client group that was coming to use our services. And my plan was on the day of, because I wasn't prepared for the presentation, was to pull the fire alarm, right? So that everybody would have to exit the building, right? And that, that we, I wouldn't have to give the presentation. That's what I'm telling my sponsor. I'm like, you know, if I do that, then, it'll, then like by the time everybody gets back, you know, we'll, have, we'll do it the next day, right? And, it, and he's like, are you listening to yourself? You're insane. He's like, you're insane. You're going to put everybody at risk? He's like, okay, so fine. You're not prepared. You do your best. You know, you do your best and you let God take care of it and you do better the next time if you can. But the thing is, you know, I have those kind of thoughts in my head, you know, and these aren't the kind of things that I could share at dinner parties, right? The kind of things that I've done and seen and, and, and you know, and, and, and that go through my head today. You know, the average, the average person, just, you know, they, they don't, they kind of don't get us, you know, but the thing is, you guys do get me, you know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bizarre, you know, some of my, 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 my thoughts tend to, you know, stray into some unusual situations and some unusual concoctions, very Seinfeld-esque situations, you know, about how I have to, like, you know, just orchestrate things or whatever. But the thing is, you know, like, we get to level the playing field today. We get to live as, as, as same human beings. I really think that alcohol synonymous can be described as a global think tank where we try and, we try and figure out what normal behavior is, right? You know, and sometimes it boils down to, hey, you know, maybe you should pay your cable bill. And that idea hadn't even occurred to me. Wait, you mean like I'll pay my cable bill? Right? And then, the, and then you guys are going to applaud me for that? Right? Where, where, where do you get applause for paying, for paying your bills? Right? Only in Alcoholics Anonymous. You know? Everywhere else, you know, there's high expectations and stuff like that. But I could be human today. That was something that I discovered in my fifth step. A sense of authenticity. I'll tell you about this. I don't know where you guys are in your steps, but I'll just give you like, you know, a couple of little things in my, my experience with the steps that have, that have helped me. With my fifth step, right? So when I was going through my fifth step, I was reading, I was, I, the fourth step allows me to take a spiritual x-ray of myself, right? I got my five columns, it boils it out to the, to the character defects, et cetera. You know, who, who offended, what happened, what it affected, what's the character defect at the end there, right? So I was, I was telling my sponsor, you know, some of my stories. And he was like, Joseph, wait, stop a second. He's like, you know, like, as you're telling me this, like, everything's got like a story in it, and you're telling me what was going through their head and this and that. You know, you're not clairvoyant. You know, you don't know what was going through their head or what their agenda was or whatever, you know, like, if you, and if you are clairvoyant, tell me what the winning lottery number is going to be, you know? But you're not, Joseph. He said, you're suffering from self-delusion. And then he said these crazy words to me, which was in sobriety, you guys might, you might agree with. He said, Joseph, you, 90, you spend most of your day reacting to a world that does not exist. And that hit me in the head like a sledgehammer. Joseph, you spend most of your day reacting to a world that does not exist. And that's the thing, that was me in sobriety. You know, because because if, if Young passed me in the hallway this morning and didn't say hello, I, I'd say to myself, he's mad at me, he's pissed. What's wrong with Young, you know? Or somebody doesn't say thank you for me driving to the airport or something like that, I'm all bent out of shape. I mean, why can't I just live in a world where, like, I can, I can, I can be a service, you know, and live and let live. That's one of our watchwords. Live and let live. Easy does it. First things first. You know, I don't have to get in everybody's business. My first sponsor has told me, he said, Joseph, there are three kinds of business, right? There's my business, your business, and God's business. And I spend a lot of time working on the two I can do nothing about. I spend a lot of time in your business. I spend a lot of time in God's business. Right? And it's only like at the end of the day when I'm completely tired that I get around to my business, right? And then, you know, today I, I today I heard of that. Today I said to myself, you know what, I'm going to take care of my business. I'm going to make my apologies. I'm going to take care of, of, you know, my relationship. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to take care of my, my prayer and meditation. You know, the things that keep me healthy, sane, and sober. It says on page 133, it says we are absolutely certain that God wants us to be happy, joyous, and free. Thanks, you. Says we're absolutely certain that God wants to be happy, joyous, and free, right? And that means if anybody on this call is not happy, joyous, and free, you're doing it wrong. Sorry to tell you, you know? And that's just the way it is. And it is for me also. If I'm not happy, joyous, and free, if I got some anxiety going on, 
I got some fear going on, I'm not doing it right. I'm not doing this right. I got I got to recalibrate. I got to ask somebody else in this program. Hey, how do what do I do with what do I deal with anxiety? How do I deal with this fear? You know, and when I drill down and I really like uncover stuff, and I and I'm good at doing this with my sponsees. Because, like, my sponsees, right, I, I tell them, I tell them, you know, I said, I know you were going to lie to me two weeks before I met you. And it's like, you know, I, I, what, who do you think you're talking to? Right? My sponsees come and try and tell me these stories about how things unfolded. And I start asking questions. And then they're like, uh-oh, you know. They realize that, like, you know, they're, they're talking to somebody who knows, you know, what's going on. And the thing is, you know, my sponsor's like that with me. He uncovers stuff, you know. He gets to my spiritual disease. And then we can do something about that. Thank God that a lot of my problems, you know, it says in the big book that my problems were my, my, how my problems were my own making. Thank God. Why is that a good thing? Because I can do something about it then. If my problems were of your own making, then I can't do anything about that. But if my problems were of my own making, I can stop creating wreckage. I can stop creating drama. Today I have a rule. Unless I am asked directly, I don't offer advice. Okay? That right there will save you three hours a day. Thanks. Right? Just trust me on that, you know, like, because we're always jumping in and, like, telling people, you know, you should do this, you should do that, you should do the other thing, you know, you should eat at this restaurant, you shouldn't go there, you should lose some weight, you should change your hairstyle, right, nobody asked me, right, when I'm asked directly, that, that's God's way of saying, hey, Joseph, I want you involved here, pick them in and get in the game, you know, when I get incoming calls from people and, you know, asking me for help with to be of service and stuff like that, that I respond to because I know it's coming from God, even though it's coming from my phone. It's the, it's the problems where I try and get involved because I, because I'm finding, I, I, I want to, I want to, before I, before I head off, I want to tell you two great acronyms that I discovered. Al-Anon, right? My Al-Anon friends, they told me about this thing. Wait, W-A-I-T. Why am I talking? Ask yourself that sometimes. Why am I talking? Why am I talking here? Is it because I'm trying to earn their friendship? Am I trying to like you know, uh, you know, to, you know, like keep things uh, um, like keep away from from a core issue, keep away from the elephant in the room? Why am I talking here? You know, you ever ask yourself that? I can see that like a lot of the energy that I'm expending in the day is for just reasons about people pleasing, or because I'm in fear about something. You know, and another another acronym that I found: How do you know whose team you're on today? Are you serving yourself or are you serving God? Write down T-A-E-M. How do you spend your time? How do you spend your energy? How do you spend your attention? How do you spend your money? If you're spending your time on things that, that are serving yourself, you're not on the God team. Right? If you're spending your, all your energy on stuff that makes you feel better and not on you know, providing for the community, you're not on the God team. What about your attention? Do you sit down with somebody you hadn't seen in a while and get on your cell phone? Don't give them any attention. Right? How, how, how crazy is our world where that's, that's become the norm? How are you spending your money, right? Are you spending all your money on things that are serving yourself? Or are you putting it back into the community? That's just an easy way to tell you what, what God's doing. And if you're on the God team, you get these things that you mentioned on page 63, and I'll end with this. Again, that's my employment contract, you know? I have a new employer today. Just reading this because it's very eloquent what it says, you know, the benefits of working this lifestyle. To establish on such a footing, we became less and less interested in ourselves, a little plans and designs. More and more, we became interested in seeing what we contribute to life. As we felt new power flew in, as we enjoyed peace of mind, as we discovered we could face life successfully, face life successfully. I'm living in the city that I want to, doing the things that I want to. I earned a rabbinical title, you know, that took me two years to do okay i'm living the dream right now that, that, that it, because of this program because of this program it wasn't that i'm you know such a great guy and god gifted this to me as we became conscious of his presence we began to lose our fear of today tomorrow the year after we were reborn right we were reborn and just by just by straight logic when something's reborn that means something has to die and it was my old character that had to die you know and as much as i didn't want to part with that old guy he had to go. He had to go because I'm because I had to be this guy today. I had to be the guy that shows up on time. I had to be the guy that like can answer the world. I had to be the guy that like you know offers positive energy into the world, not the guy that was like sucking everything up. And I'm proud of that today. God made that possible. 
and I discovered running with you guys is the best life that I've ever lived. Some of my best friends, you know, are an alcoholic anonymous in the room, you know? And I get to hear the stories. I get to hear your success stories, you know? It really it makes, it makes, it makes my heart sing, you know? It's an honor and a privilege to walk among you, and I'm, I'm eager to hear what you guys have to say today. Thanks for letting me share. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.